Hey guys, we're over at the CN Caramat and Kinghorn subdivisions layout, and my friend Justin's going to show us how to use the ESU Lock Sound Programmer and to upgrade a locomotive to full throttle. So we're going to do this 1732 here for Ontario Northland. Okay, Justin, what's the first thing they need to do to be able to upgrade their locomotives to full throttle? I'm really glad you asked me that question here, Ben. So first question, first item is how to hook up the lock programmer. It's real simple. You essentially take it out of the box, it comes like this. You've got two connections to program locomotives. Three connections, actually. You, you have a power connection right here. Your United Serial Bus 14-pin uh, adapter, I believe, is what it's called there. So on my old computer, it's got a 14-pin on the back of it that I can hook it into directly. So for those of you who don't have the 14-pin connector, you can hook this up to the back of the unit that comes with the lock programmer, and it'll plug into a USB cable. So very simple. These go to the programming track. There's your power, and there's your pin for the computer connection. Okay, to install the, the lock programmer software, you got to go to the ESU website. Here's the home page. Very, very simple. Downloads. Firmware and software. And there's your lock programmer PC software. So, of course, you download the correct one for your computer. Uh, in my case, it's already been installed, but you want the most recent version. When I downloaded the lock program, it went into a file. Here's what I got when I opened it up. So obviously here's your setup application. And obviously I don't want to remove the currently installed version, but follow the prompts. You're going to get through. It's going to tell you how to, uh, how to hook it up. You're going to want to start installing the software, and then it's going to prompt you to plug in the connector to the track. And then once you get all that done, you're going to get this type of a format here. So with the format that we've got right now, this is pretty much the basic lock programmer screen. There's no locomotive hooked up to this, there's no CVs that have been read, no programs have been read. Uh, it's pretty much just bare bones lock programmer. The 1732 is on the track right now. If I click read, and you're going to want to try this obviously, put a locomotive with a decoder on the track, read, you're going to see it's reading the decoder data, and it should come back with a table of values here in a second. So this is my pre-established file for locomotive 1732. As you can see, it read all the settings off the decoder. There's the address right there. This locomotive has already been programmed. You know, all kinds of functions that I've set so far. We'll go over some of this stuff later. But to install the lock programmer and upload start programming locomotives is really, really simple. I mean, essentially, if I had a non-sound ESU decoder or a sound ESU decoder, I can go ahead and start setting all the functions right here. You know, I can change the address to whatever I want. I can change um, motor settings, function mapping. So as you guys can see with Bowser's, you've got quite a bit of functions on the list right here. I've modified some of mine. It's very intuitive. It's reasonably easy to follow. Uh, you can set up things like Rule 17 lighting, auxiliary commands, what type of light you want. If you want the strobe light, to, uh, or the ditch lights to flash like a strobe light for whatever reason, you can do that. Um, really, really able to dig deep into it. And I've spent probably about a week working with this and I've already figured out a lot of it. I don't know everything, but it's uh, pretty easy to, to, to figure things out once you uh, have a little bit of practice. To get the full throttle sound features, first thing you gotta do is you gotta go to the full throttle features on the ESU Locks on website. You can go to available sounds here and it'll come up with a list of everything. So there's different types of decoders, so you gotta understand what type of decoder was put in your locomotive. I've custom wired a few, so I know I use, such as uh, the lock sound select. So if I'm looking for the Bowser SD40-2 sound file, I go lock sound US files for factory equipped locomotives, because this is a stock locomotive, it hasn't been touched. Scroll down, you'll find the SD40-2 sound file right here. It says for Bowser GMD SD42. So once again, you would download it, Pretty easy to download. And you get with this right here. This is what comes up. Once you download it, this is what will be opened here. So all this is, this is a basic file for a locomotive. So I can write this entire file onto a locomotive. So right now I've got 1732 on the programming track. And while I'm not going to actually do it because it takes some time, if I was to do this right here, write sound data, it's going to write all the sound files onto this locomotive. And it takes about a half hour. So you know, make sure you're not uh, having to do anything else in the meantime. You click this, it has to go through the whole process before it updates the sound files. But it's really simple. You do that, 
And what you'll wind up having is you're going to wind up having a locomotive now, such as my 1732. Okay, so once you uh, load the sound file on the locomotive, it's going to take about a half hour. All of these sounds will now be on the decoder itself. So if you were to put the locomotive on the track, it would have the new sounds, but everything else would be changed. So you'd have all the basic functions. So this one was written for the Bowser ST40-2. So all of the Bowser functions, like the class lights, the headlights, and all that should stay the same because it's got the same template for the function mapping. Obviously, you're going to have to change things like your address because right now it says address 127. You're going to have to change things like, you know, which functions you want coming on in consist mode. You might have to change things like your lighting outputs. So what you want your front headlights to do. But I think for the most part, uh, this file, because it's designed for the Bowser SD40-2, is uh, pretty much set up and good to go. You just really need to change your address and whatever other functions you want to decide to change. But that's pretty much it. Once you've got that done, you've now upgraded your locomotive to full throttle. Real simple once you figure out how to do one. <laughs> Here's a locomotive with the full throttle sound features installed on it. Um, we're going to go through the simple functions. Obviously, you've got your headlights. This one's a little bit dimmer than normal because it's got Rule 17 lighting in it. Obviously, your class lights are still working. Uh, right now, we're going to start it up. Got your horn and dog too, as well. So all that stuff's the same. I didn't have to change any of that when I installed the full throttle on this Bowser unit. Obviously, other manufacturers, it'll be different. If you're doing a custom install, you're going to have to go through the CVs and set this. That's uh, probably subject for another video. Okay, so the way the full throttle works is you start throttling up. So we're going to go to about speed step one or two here. The locomotive is going to start rolling. And then what you can do is you can hit function nine, which I believe is called drive hold. And then it'll rev up without moving any faster. So the engine will throttle up. The locomotive will stay the same current speed as you can hear right now. And it can throttle down and it won't go any faster or any slower until you press F9 again. So it's sort of like manual notching. Exactly, but I think it's a little bit more intuitive and easier to use, and that was the idea behind it. So I hit 9, and now the locomotive stops. So conversely, what you can also do is you can throttle it up under typical conditions. So I'm at speed step 3 and 4 now. It's going to move. And then I can hit F10, which will basically initiate a braking application. The locomotive throttle levels will still stay the same, the engine prime mover noise will still be there, but the locomotive is now under braking. I call it a locomotive brake, I guess. If I hit F10 again, it picks up speed. And it makes fancy air let off noises too to let you know that you're either braking or not braking. This is something to keep in mind as well. If you're trying to run your locomotive and it won't move, there's a good chance that you have F9 enabled or you have F10 enabled. So keep an eye out for that. Ask me how I know. And that in a nutshell is the full throttle features. I know there's more to it. Um, this is a simple video. The key things to remember are is you need to have the lock programmer, a computer that can run it. So I've got a Windows 7 system. I know it can work with Mac. You just got to pick the right software. So downloading the software after it's been hooked up having a program track set up, write the sound files on it, and then do your other programming, and that's about it. It takes about a half hour to upload the sound files on the locomotive, so keep that in mind. If you've got a computer that shuts off on its own, make sure maybe set the settings on the PC so that it stays on while that thing is installing, or you'll have to start over again. Other than that, that's about it. It's pretty simple once you figure it out, and with some practice and some playing around with the system itself, you can find out a lot of the interesting functions that any DCC decoder, but particularly ESU has. Well, thanks a lot for showing us that, Justin, and I'll uh, be sure to bring my uh, all my Bowser units over here to get full throttle installed. It's going to cost you about $40 a unit, Ben, but I think <laughs> I can make that work for you. All right. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you next time.